Hello all, so in this tutorial we will start the design of our neural network. So first of all we are going to design a basic neuron which is the basic building block of a neural network. Okay. So again I am referring to that same website here. So this is the general architecture of a neuron. So you can see uh, many inputs come to the neuron. So these inputs again depending upon our application it can be some pixel value uh, it can be some sound sample things like that and what the neuron basically does is it will multiply each of this input with a corresponding weight value and add them together and add a so-called the bias value to that and finally apply it to, the, to an activation function and gives us the output okay so that's what is represented here assuming it is using a sigmoid activation function the output is 1 by 1 plus e to power of minus z and where z will be this value w dot x this is a dot product that means each input is multiplied with the corresponding weight and add the bias bias can be positive or negative okay so add with the bias and gives the output this is what basically a neuron does so you can see like uh, the architecture it is very hardware friendly uh, especially this dot product because you can do this multiplication and addition in parallel in hardware so it is supposed to be much faster than software but we'll have to do some kind of trade-off here because many neurons it may have hundreds of input for example we are going to again implement the neural network for MNIST data set and the neurons in the first layer in the MNIST is going to take 784 inputs okay that means if in hardware design when you are designing it as a module you will have 784 inputs for representing the input and each input again that's not one bit okay depending upon our fixed point representation depending upon the value for x it may be like 10 bits or uh, 32 bits whatever it is so those many wires are coming here and if you try to do that uh, multiplication and addition in parallel that is going to give us a big combinational circuit okay so you may be doing things in parallel but the maximum clock frequency at which you will be operating will be so low that you won't get any special advantage so to avoid it we will have to make things little bit sequential not only that uh, we want to make a design in such a way that it is quite scalable uh, what i mean is i should be able to uh, use the same neuron design irrespective of the number of inputs that design i should be able to use with the two input 10 input 100 input 1000 input any number of input uh, i don't want to change the design of my neuron okay so in our hardware implementation you will see uh, the interface will look slightly different but otherwise internally the operation is same we will do the multiplication and addition operation uh, basically mac operation multiply accumulate and we will add with the bias and apply it to the sigmoid function okay so the architecture of the neuron that we are going to design is shown in this picture now i will uh, show you the code so that we can have one to one correspondence so whenever you look at the code look at this uh, picture also so that you clearly understand what is happening so you can see the main components here so we are going to use a memory called a weight memory for storing the weight value okay now the depth of the memory will depend upon number of input coming to the neuron so each location in the memory will represent a weight value corresponding to that particular input now this you can implement either as a ROM or as a RAM. That means, uh, again, as I mentioned before, we are going to use pre-trained network. So the weight values will be already available. So you can uh, just store it in a ROM and you never want to change it. Or again, for flexibility, you can have some provision uh, where this is like more like a RAM and you can store the weight values here. And later, if you want to change, you will be able to do it. So I will show you both so both are supported in our design and this is where our input is going to come and i have a delay here why it is that i will explain and here is the multiplication operation we are multiplying each weight with the 
corresponding input or oh. each input with the corresponding weight and that is managed by this logic he is the one who fetches the appropriate weight from this memory and multiply with this input so we have multiply operation and uh, that will go to the accumulate operation which is basically here so it will add this output with the previous output now here there are some muxes and some additional circuitry again when we look at the code i will explain them what they are and this is the bias value finally what happens is this uh, multiplied and accumulated value will get added with this bias also through this adder and that will be going to the activation function this is again as i mentioned before is a rom where we store the pre-calculated value for our corresponding activation function such as sigmoid and finally we have the output okay so this is the generic architecture we are going to look at now i will directly show you the code then let's try to find out what's happening okay so this is the code for our neuron for a single neuron uh, it's highly parametric most of the things are parametrized and uh, as we go along i guess we'll have a better idea what each parameter is doing okay so first thing i would like to show is this uh, memory for storing our weights so you you can see like there is a weight memory here so that weight memory is instantiated here this is that weight memory so basically this is the code for that weight memory again you can see we are not using any silence ip we are just writing it as a uh, with look code okay so this is the memory inside that now uh, uh, you can parameterize what is the width of that memory and what is the depth of that memory so the depth of the memory depends upon how many weights you have also the number of weights actually depends upon the number of inputs to your neuron okay so these things will be uh, configured from the topmost level module like how many weights are for each each neuron okay so here it is written like three it need not be three because in the top module Uh, it is 784 okay so these values depend upon the particular application we are going to look at so that you can forget for the time being what is the exact value but overall idea is this you can configure the width here and you can configure the depth here through this parameter and <clears throat> this is the part which is basically deciding whether this will act like a ram or a rom so we have a parameter here called pre-trained uh, it is a defined value which is stored in this uh, include file again i guess in previous tutorials we have never used this include file so again coming from our c side so you can uh, i can show you that file forget about everything only look at this one so we are defining uh, pre-trained okay tick define pre-trained so if you define that this will act more or like as a ROM. If that is not defined, it will act more or less like a RAM. So you can see like uh, uh, there are two parts here, which only one of them will be true depending upon the condition that we have written here. Now, if it is uh, behaving as a ROM, this is what we are going to do. This dollar read mem B, that is a Verilog uh, system task. Yeah, predefined task predefined function which can be used for initializing a memory in Vitlog. so we already have a memory here two dimensional memory that is here and we need to store the initialization value for this memory in a particular file and he will read from that file and will initialize this memory again that file depends upon the particular neuron and it is again configured from the top module but I can show you the content of one of these files. Okay, so here it is written w underscore one underscore fifteen dot mif. So this mif extension uh, that is uh, something styling specific. It stands for memory initialization file. But that extension really doesn't matter. Okay, you can call it by whatever extension, and even if there is no extension, it is perfectly fine. What is important is if you are writing it as read mem b that means the content of the file should be in binary format 
if you write read mem h that means the content of the file should be in hexadecimal format and uh, here you can see it so these are different weight values for a particular neuron uh, calculated in binary this is again fixed point representation uh, how many bits are there and all we will discuss later but uh, you can see like there are 784 because this this particular neuron it is going to be the first neuron in our MNIST uh, neural network okay and the neurons in the first layer in MNIST it needs 784 inputs so there will be 784 weights so those weights are already stored here 784 values and what he does is he will take these 784 values and he will just initialize it initialize this memory using that file that is what is happening if we define it as pre-trained if it is not defined as pre-trained that means the values to the memory will be stored by some external circuitry that is what is written here which is like our normal ram so we have a write address address bus and uh, we have write data this is the write data and we have write enable which is like valid signal so whenever valid signal is coming whatever input is coming we will store it in the memory and we will increment this also uh, that incrementing will be done by the external circuit uh, circuitry it's not done here that will be done by the external circuitry so he'll basically tell me where to store the weight and weight is valid and what is the weight value based on that we will store it here that's it for the uh, storing part now reading part is common whether it is ram or rom how you read is we have a read enable signal coming here and there is a read address also coming from external world and based on that read address and if there is read enable he will just take that value from the memory and he gives it out now here this coding strategy is important so remember in the presentation i said like we prefer block rams for memory implementation okay now same logic maybe i can write it in combinational circuit something like this always at star if read enable write out equal to this one else uh, w out is zero this is perfectly fine if you, if you don't write this one that is a latch inference so we need to write uh, the else case also anyway the, so this represents a, a combination circuit that means you don't have read latency as soon as read enable comes uh, we will get the output but in the previous case this is sequential that means we have one clock read latency so if you place read enable and the address the weight value will come only after one clock cycle now if you use a combinational representation like this Vivado he will always infer it using distributed RAM he will never implement this using block RAM he cannot implement this logic using a block RAM so if you are intending to use a block RAM if you want to infer a block RAM the output should be always sequential like this and only he will do it okay that's a important thing to remember Okay, so now let's go back to our neuron. So that weight memory is what is instantiated here. Now let's see how exactly those weights get stored there, provided our neural network is not pre-trained. Okay, so you can see our write address is here. Let's look at that logic here. This is the logic which is basically doing it. So at the top, you can see we have this signal again coming from the module on top of this neuron which we will discuss later we have signals called weight valid which is basically saying the input weight is a valid weight and we have a weight value okay so these are the values which will get stored in that uh, neuron so you can see the logic here so at reset we have this right address it is initialized with all ones again uh, why it is so that is because of the particular logic he used here okay so you can see uh, whenever we are writing the right address going to the neuron is current value plus one so the initial weight i need to store it in 
zero. So for that logic to work, the initial value of write address should be all ones. Then only all ones plus one will become zero. And again, since this is parameterized, what is the width of write address is not fixed. You can see here. So width of write address is simply written as address width minus one. And what is this value? This value is log of number of weights. And this number of weight is a parameter. Again, this dollar $c log2 is a weight log uh, task, which will find the log of this number to the base of two. So the width of the address bus for addressing this weight memory should be log of number of weights, right? Yeah, like we usually use. So this guy will calculate that value. And based on that value, right address is calculated. Now, again, these are done statically. That means at runtime, you cannot change this parameter. Okay? These are statically expanded by Vivado when he analyzes your code. So 784 is a constant. From that, he will find this value. From that, he will find this value. But when I write the code, I cannot directly write here like uh, address width. How am I going to write it? All of them should be one. Okay. So this is the trick in Wedlock. Those who haven't seen before to, to initialize everything to one using the concatenation operator. So this basically means uh, replicate one bit one these many times, which basically means all the bits of right address will be initialized to one. Okay. For zero, uh, maybe you can just write zero here it will just work but if you want everything to be one we have to do something like this when you don't know the exact width if you really know like it's always 32 bit maybe you can write 32 tick uh, h f f f f something like that but here since we don't know what is it because it's not always a constant we'll have to do something like that now after that yeah whenever there is a valid weight coming from external world and that is intended for this particular neuron. Again, we have hundreds of neurons. So each neuron will be uniquely identified by a few parameters. One is what is the layer in which this neuron is present? First layer, second layer, third layer, whatever layer number. And what is the particular number of this neuron in that particular layer okay based on these two parameters we will uniquely identify each neuron for example this neuron is in layer one and this is the first neuron this neuron is in layer two first neuron okay this is in layer two third neuron like that each neuron will be assigned a unique number again that happens from the top here you can see layer number neuron number the default values but will be configured by the module on top of it so if so you can say like uh, this uh, weight bus it is a shared bus among all the neurons all of them get the same uh, weight value and weight uh, valid signals but based on this parameter and this parameter a particular neuron is addressed if that is a value yeah that weight value will go to wn which is basically going to our weight memory weight valid will become one right enable and right address will be incremented by one yeah since we are starting with all one first weight will go to all one plus one to zero which makes sense okay so that is what is shown here so weight value is coming i'm not showing the control signals but it ultimately gets stored in the weight memory and the output from the weight memory is called w underscore out weight memory out this one the next what we have to do we have to multiply this w out with the input so first we will configure the weight and later at some point we will have the input values coming which i am calling my input and there is a value signal also to indicate this is a valid input okay this one so as i mentioned before it doesn't matter how many inputs a neuron has it has only one input bus so input values will come one after the other so if you have 784 input first first input will come then second input will come so on and so forth sequentially for each neuron okay so whenever your uh, input is coming that input should be 
multiplied by the corresponding weight. Now remember our weight memory, we wrote it sequentially, that means it has one clock delay, one clock latency. So because of that, this input is also delayed by one clock. You can see here, then it is multiplied with the output of the weight memory. Okay, now you can see each weight will be multiplied by the corresponding input. First weight by first input, second weight by second input, so on and so forth. And here you can see this task again, dollar signed. It's very important. In this implementation, we are going to use two's complement representation for all the numbers. Now in two's complement representation, uh, if you just multiply two numbers, the output won't be two's complement, as I mentioned before. So we need to tell Vivado or whatever implementation tool that we are doing signed multiplication. So use the appropriate circuit to do it. Okay. So what he does is uh, our normal rules. If both are positive, the output will be positive. If one of them is negative, the output will be negative. So he will make the appropriate circuit. He will configure the DSP slices appropriately so that this result MUL, which is in our figure, this one, MUL will represent the signed multiplication result of the weight and the input. That's it. So we multiplied it. Okay, so what's the next one? This multiplied value, so this is a multiply and accumulate operation now. Inputs will be coming, we keep multiplying and add it with the previous result. That part is happening here, that addition part, and it appears a little bit complicated. Let me explain what is going on here. First part is easy. Uh, whenever a reset comes, or whenever this neuron gives out the output, final output after activation, this sum will be reset to zero. Okay, makes sense. Now, these are the other cases. Okay, let's look at the normal case. Okay, here, this is a uh, normal case. In during normal multiplication, what happens? So, uh, one possibility is that when you do this multiplication and addition, overflow may happen or sometimes underflow may also happen. Okay, so what I mean is, okay, to clarify it, let's look at this picture. So here, see what is happening. Uh, so here you can see a circuit called combo add. Okay, so what combo add does is uh, it adds the current, this uh, multiplication result with the previous sum, this sum. Okay, so he's adding them together and you get this combo add. So what is the condition written here? If, look at this bit. So this bit is two times data with minus one that represent the leftmost bit of MUL. That is the leftmost bit of this guy. If that is zero, that means in signed representation, this is a positive number and sum is zero. Okay, so where is the sum? That is this one, the previous sum. That means both multiplication and the previous sum, they are positive and combo add that is representing the current addition between this multiplication and this sum. And its MSP is one. So again, in sign representation, uh, that represents a negative number. So what it basically says is, when you add a two positive numbers and when the result is negative, that means something went wrong. Okay. When you add two positive numbers, you are supposed to get a positive number. And if you get a negative number, that means an overflow has happened. And that means the output number is greater than what can be represented using these many bits. In that case, you need to saturate the output. The output sum should be lashed to the maximum value. So that's what you can see. The sign bit of sum is made zero. That means it's a positive number and all the remaining bits of the sum is made one, which is the largest positive number. Okay. So again, we need to refer to this picture to get a clear picture. So sum 
is the overall output of a particular mux here okay and this combo add is the sum of the current uh, product between input and weight and the previous sum coming from here what we are checking is whether this is positive this is positive and this is negative if these two are positive and this is negative that means all flow has happened so we saturate this guy to the maximum positive value same way the other thing can also happen see here so mul ms bit is one that means it's a negative number sum ms bit is one that means that's also a negative number but combo add when you added them here the ms bit is zero that means you got a positive number when you add a two negative number you got a positive number again something went wrong that is when underflow happens the number output number is so small that it can be it cannot be represented using these many bits that means you need to latch this output to the smallest value okay that is what is done here the sign bit is one and all remaining bits are zero that represents the smallest number in two scombian representation so this is for uh, taking care of the overflow and underflow cases if they are not happening this sum will just represent combo add so combo add is basically one plus sum same as this picture one plus previous sum okay you accumulate them that is what this part is happening and that is the usual case when you are doing multiplication now a special hap case happens when you are doing the last multiplication and addition so in the last case uh, what you need to do is you need to add with bias so you can see here so generally we add the output of this uh, multiplier with sum but in the last case once you have done all multiplication accumulation with the weight you need to add with the bias value and this is that value and that is the case being checked here you can see this read address this is the address going to the weight memory if it is num weight that is the maximum value and if the max value is uh, falling again that logic you can see we'll see later same thing we are checking this case is for overflow this case is for underflow this case is neither overflow nor underflow we get the sum so this circuit represents this part except with that overflow underflow logic so we have a mux which chooses either between the sum of this guy with the previous sum or bias value with the previous one appropriately and this is a sequential circuit that means that's also introducing a delay there so we have this sum now where is that sum going that sum is actually going to our activation function now this particular implementation uh, supports two kind of activation function as of now you are free to add more again that is where another trick of weight log you can see uh, using the generate statement if you haven't seen it before so using generate statement generally we use generate statement when you have to instantiate same module multiple times uh, you can use uh, for loop to do it and you cannot just di directly write for loop in your code you can write that for loop only inside so-called a generate statement those who haven't seen it in with loop before you need to go and check it out but here uh, I'm using generate statement to selectively instantiate one of the modules. Okay. So again, this parameter act type that is coming from again from the top and using that I can choose whether I need to instantiate a sigmoid activation function or a rectified linear unit activation function. This is a linear function and this is a non-linear function if i choose sigmoid he will instantiate this one if i choose relu he will instantiate this one these are again two separate modules you can see this is relu it's uh, linear so quite straightforward implementation 
but uh, sigmoid is a little bit more uh, complicated as i mentioned we are going to use a lookup table to store those sigmoid values how it is done uh, i will explain in the next tutorial but basically and this is how it will look like we pre-calculate those sigmoid values and we have already stored it uh, this is also an mif function memory initialization function which is used for initializing this memory and uh, You can see this sum output is going as the input to this ROM and the output from that ROM will directly represent the sigmoid value for that particular input. Now what is that particular input? The MAC output added with the bias value. Multiply, accumulate. You uh, multiply and accumulate all inputs and weights, add the bias to it and that is what is this sum. That is what is going as the input here and we get the output from the sigmoid okay now uh, again why the entire sum is not going and only a part of it going there you can see um, i'm sending only the upper bits here so maximum width minus whatever is the size of so-called sigmoid because again uh, sigmoid is again implemented as a memory and uh, I can define what is the depth of that memory. The more deep it is, the better precision I will have, but more resources it will utilize. So here I have written sigmoid size is 5. That means the size of sigmoid memory is only 2 to the power of 5, 32. That's why in this MIF file you can see only 32. So if you increase that depth, you will have more accuracy. Okay, so this guy has only 32 locations available, but my sum, its total width is two times my total data width, which is like 16 here. That is the total data width for our fixed point representation. Again, you can change it. So you cannot uh, directly send this entire uh, 32 bits to the sigmoid. Uh, it, it won't work, right? because those many locations are not there so what we need to do we need to drop all the lower bits and send only the most significant bits and that is what is done here so starting from the most significant bit only the upper sigmoid size those many bits we are sending this style we have used before and uh, this uh, slicing in very look and uh, this is how we do it and we get the output Okay, so we have the output here. So this is the basic implementation. Uh, sigmoid, how it is done, I will explain in next tutorial. But I have, uh, you have an overall idea. So main takeaway is, irrespective of number of input, we make them sequential. We send them only one by one for getting better timing performance, as well as to reduce the resource utilization. That is one takeaway. And the weight values, we generally use a distributed bus, a shared bus, so that all the neurons are hooked up to the same bus. And by controlling the configuration layer number and neuron number, I can address a particular neuron to send the weight value to that particular neuron. Okay, so that's another takeaway. And whenever you write memory, you use the output in sequential format uh, so that it will get implemented using block RAM instead of distributed RAM. Here you can see I'm not using sequential. I'm using assign statement uh, for this so-called the sigmoid ROM, which stores the sigmoid value. And because of this, this sigmoid memory won't be implemented in block RAM, but in distributed RAM. But the size of this sigmoid memory will be quite small, 32 bit, uh, 32 deep or 64 deep. So it is actually better to use uh, distributed RAM because block RAM, uh, the smallest block RAM is 18 kilobit. So even if you are not using 18 kilobit, the remaining part becomes unused. So it is better to use uh, distributed RAM for this activation function, but for weight values, it is better to use block RAM. Okay, so these are the main takeaway. Now the minor control signal, you can uh, try to read and understand if you have any doubt please ask me in the comments i will try to 
reply most of them are to manage the pipeline delay because uh, we have uh, one pipeline delay here then one pipeline delay here one pipeline delay here so our valid signal has to be delayed uh, accordingly so that's what most of this logic is doing okay so if they are not clear uh, please feel free to ask i will try to clarify so in next tutorial we will discuss more about the implementation of the activation function